In this tutorial we're going to look at various modelling techniques in order for us to create the trout that you can see here. We'll look at how we can create a component from a bitmap in order for us to create a texture and we'll also look at various modelling techniques from the create shape tool to the two rail sweep in order for us to model a basic fish shape. We'll then look at overlaying the texture on top of that basic fish shape to get this finished result. So let's go to file, close, so let's go and create a new file. So in the job setup form I'm going to specify some values in here. So we'll give that a width of 12, a height of 4 inches. We'll set Z0 to be on top of the material. I'm going to give that a material thickness of 3 quarters of an inch. We'll set my XY position to be in the lower left hand corner, working with inches and I'd like to set my modelling resolution to be high. Then we can press OK. I'm going to come over to the 2D view control. We're going to use the option to tile my windows horizontally. That way I can see the 2D view at the top and the 3D view at the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a model based on an imported image. Now I could use this option here to import a bitmap for tracing, where I'd use that then to help me sketch in some vectors that we'd then use with the modeling tools. But what I'd like to do is create a component directly from an image and that would be part of my modelling process. So let's go over to the modelling tab. And so we can go and use this option up here to create a component from selected bitmap. So if I select that, you can see that we can search your computer for an image that you can use. So I'm going to use the rainbow trout JPEG file from the projects folder and then we're going to open that up and we can see here that we have a component in the 3D view which is a texture based on the light and dark areas of the image. We can see it's also been added to the component tree and we also have a grayscale in the 2D view. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to align it to the centre of my material so we'll say align selected objects I'm going to align that to the centre there and then we can close that and then I'm going to alter the size of that also so we'll go over to set selected object size I'd like to keep link XY checked so it scales in proportion and I'm just going to alter the height of this to be 4 inches and we can press apply and we can see that that's scaled that up in proportion so now we can close that down. So at this stage, now that I have my texture component, I'd go ahead and start drawing the basic fish shapes. So we can then go and take those and create components from to form the basic fish model. Now as this is a modeling exercise, I'm going to look at importing vectors that we've already drew in the software. So we're going to go over to File, and then we're going to use this option here to import vectors. Then from the project folder, I'm going to import troutvectors.eps and then we'll press open. And so we can see that we have a collection of vectors here that represent all of the basic shapes that form that fish. And so we drew the vectors in the software using the polyline tool, except for the eye, we would have used the ellipse tool to draw that in. Spent about 10 to 20 minutes drawing those out and then going into the node edit mode to smooth out those vectors until we had something that looks like this. And so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to look at organising my vectors and put them on specific layers just so it makes it easier for me to see the part in the 2D view. So if we go over to our layers tab we can see we have a layer called layer 1 and import trout vectors. This is bold so it's telling me that this is an active layer at the minute and that's because we imported vectors so it automatically assigns a new layer for those vectors to go on to. So I'm just going to go to layer 1, I'm going to right mouse click and rename that layer and we're going to call that layer trout texture as I know that the texture is on that first layer uh, by default. So I'll call that Trout Texture and then I'm going to go to the Import Trout Vectors layer I'm going to right mouse click and I'm also going to rename this layer and we'll call that layer Outline Vectors. And so I'm going to go into the 2D view I'm just going to zoom in slightly I'm going to select this vector here 
this one here, hold down shift and select this one here. Probably help if I maximize the 2D view. So we've got the two vectors here selected. I'd also like to select this vector and this vector here. I'm just going to zoom out and then I'm going to right mouse click and say move to layer and we'll assign that a new layer and we're going to call this layer to rail sweep. As those are the vectors that we're going to use uh, to create the two rail sweep for the main body of that fish. Okay, so I'm just going to make that invisible, inactive, press OK and we can see it's been added to our layers list. So now I can switch everything off. Um, so if I switch everything on individually, so we've got our trout texture there, then we have our outline vectors. If I just press F to fit that to screen, and you'll notice that the vectors that represent the fins are all overlapping the main body of our fish shape here. And the reason for that is that when we start to create components from these vectors, we need to have that overlap between the vectors so that the components can blend in with each other. And so this uh, vector that we've got selected represents the outline of the fish body, which we'll look at cropping components to. And then all of the other vectors that we've got within this layer represent areas that we're going to look at modeling shapes from using the Create Shape tool. So let's just switch off that layer there, and then we're going to switch on this layer. This is the two rail sweep. So we're going to model the main body of the shape using the two rail sweep where we've got two vectors that will represent our drive rails and then we're going to sweep cross sections through those rails. Before I go and create any components I'd like to add in one more layer so let's use the option to add a new layer and I'm going to call that layer components and then I'm going to move that up to the top of my layers list you can see it's bold, so it's the active layer, so anything that I create now will be added to that layer. I'm just going to switch off the trout texture, and then we're going to go over to the modeling tab. And it would also be a good idea to organize my component tree. So where we have level 1, I'd like to rename that level. I'm going to right mouse click, rename that level, and I'm going to call that level trout. And then I'd like to insert a new level, so I'm going to right mouse click, say insert new level, and then I'm going to right mouse click again and I'm going to rename that level and I'm going to call that basic fish shape. Okay, so I'm just going to switch the trout level off, so switching off that texture also. And we've got the basic fish shape is the active level now, so any components that I create will be added to this level that we've got here. So let's go and tile our windows horizontally. So let's go and create that basic fish shape using the two rail sweep. So we've already got one vector selected. Let's go and hold down shift, select the other vector, and then we'll use the two rail sweep option. I'm going to say use selection. Okay, so let's now transform those vectors into drive rails. So now we can go and select a cross section in order for it to sweep across the two rails. So I'm going to select this rounded profile here, and then I'm going to apply that to this node. And we can see that that's uh, sweeping all the way through. It's color coordinated, it's a red node on this cross section here. And we can see that red node here and the red node there. So it's telling me it's that cross section going all the way through. If we just press apply to see how that looks, you can see we have a rather rounded shape and that's taking the form of the cross section that we have selected. Now I'd like, I'd like our tail fin to flatten out as that's how it would normally look in the natural world. So I'm going to use this vector here, you can see it's a, it has a rather flat profile and I'm going to apply that to this node here. Okay, so you can see it's changed uh, a yellow colour there, and we can also see the cross section is represented by this yellow node here. So now if we apply that, we can see now that we have the round profile coming through, and then it's uh, softly getting flatter towards the end. Now that's not too bad, however I would like to maintain the uh, curvature in the fish a little more, so I'm going to select the round profile, I'm going to add it somewhere around here. 
Okay, so we're just adding in another cross section there. So when I apply that, we can see it's maintaining that roundness and then it's coming in flat at the end there. But I'd also like to add in a flat profile at this point here, just so that the tail is a bit more defined. So I'm going to select the flat profile, put that in position there, press apply, we can see how that looks. Okay, so we've got more of a natural looking shape. We also have the option scale cross sections with width checked, uh, which is appropriate in this case as we're working with a natural form. And having that checked means that when the two rails are closer together, the shape is going to be smaller in height than when they're further apart. So it's going to increase the height when the two rails are further away from each other. Okay, so we'll go and call that basic fish shape. And then we'll press apply. And then we can close that form down. So let's put that in Z in the 3D view. And you'll remember when we go to our layers tab, we had the outline vectors. And so now we need to think about cropping back that basic fish shape to the outline of the fish. So if we go to our layers tab, I'm just going to switch off that two rail sweep layer, and then we'll turn on the outline vectors. We can see that we have that vector that we need to crop our basic fish shape too. So if we go to the modeling tab, first thing I need to do is select my component first. Then I'm going to hold down shift and then select the vector that I'd like to crop that to. What we're going to do is we're going to remove everything outside of this vector. So it's similar to a cookie cutter. Okay, so if those both selected, let's go over to this option to clear area of selected component outside of the selected vectors. So we'll use that and we can see it's cropped everything outside of the vector. So now we have a more natural, realistic looking fish shape here. So I'll put that back in Z. And now we'll start to model in all of the other components that will form the overall basic fish shape. So we'll select this vector here that represents the eye. And then we're going to go over and use the option to create shape from vectors. So in here, I'm going to give that a rounded profile. We'll make that 90 degrees. I'm pushing that right up to the top. I'm going to give that a base height of zero. We don't want a base height in there. And then I'm going to scale that to an exact height of 0 0.05. Okay, so if we press apply to see how that looks. Okay, so you can see that we have, uh, if I just zoom in there, so I'll just use the scroller of my mouse to zoom in there. And you can see that we have a nice sharp edge and then it's flattening off at that 0.5. So we're getting that nice button look there. Okay, so I'm going to call that I and then we'll press apply. I'll put that back in Z. And so now I can go and start a new component. So we'll say start new component. And so the next component is going to be this gill area here. So if that vector is selected, we're going to use a curved profile again, except I'm going to reduce the angle of this to be five degrees as I want that to have a very shallow shape. We'll set the final height of that to have no limit and then we'll just apply that to see how that looks. Okay, so you can see it's a very shallow shape there. What I'd like to do is add a wedge to the right hand side of this part so that we get a line that would represent that gill area here. So to do that I'm going to use the tilt option and that's going to add a wedge to an area that I specify. So if I use the option to set anchor Okay, so I'm going to have my start point on the left hand side, so I'm just going to click in the 2D view. We can see that that's pulled out a dotted line here. So I'm going to pull that out in the direction that I'd like to apply a tilt, which is on the right hand side. And we can see that that's created that wedge there for us. Okay, so that's a bit too much, it's done that at default of 10 degrees. So I'm just going to look at reducing that right down to around 1 degree. Okay, and we can see it that's created that hard edge there, and that's created that nice gill shape here. Okay, so we're just going to go and call that gill, and then we can press apply. We'll put that back in Z, 
and then we can close the form down. And so now that we have that nice step that represents the gill area, we need to look at making this a bit more realistic. As we know that in reality a gill doesn't come all the way from the bottom and go all the way to the top of the fish's body, it sort of breaks about here. So we need to look at blending the gill into the fish's body at this top area here. So we're going to look at using the sculpting tools. Now before I do that I'd like to crop this shape to the shape of our basic fish. So again we're going to use this uh, tool um, at the top here, the clear area of selected component. Uh, so I'm going to select my gill first. Okay, So we've got that selected. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select the main body here as we can also crop to components in the selection. Okay, So as the basic fish shape was the last in my selection, that's the shape that we're cropping to, then we'll come over and say clear area of selected component and that's going to crop that down for me. So now we can go and take that and uh, look at sculpting that. So we'll go and select the gill and then we'll go and use the sculpting tools. And so the idea of this is to blend that top area of the gill into the main body of the fish. So I'm going to use the smooth option. I'm just going to up my diameter to be around 80, 90. And I'm going to bring the strength up to around 60. We'll keep the smoothness set to 70 there. And I'm also going to uncheck preserve transparency as I want to blend my material into the modeling plane. And I'm also going to check show grayscale background. What that allows me to do, it allows me to see the grayscale of the other components that we have, so we can see that fish shape there. And so then we can go in and start blending in that gill area. So if I just come round, we can see instantly how that's reacting. I'm, all I'm doing is just going round the part. Okay. And so if we just take a moment to talk about that in a minute, so we can see that shadow coming in there, and that's showing us how that's going to be blending in with the fish shape underneath. And see I've gone into my modeling plane here because we've got the preserve transparency switched off. That's okay as I can look at cropping this uh, sculpt that we do afterwards to the main shape of the fish using that vector here. Okay, so I'm just going to go over a bit more aggressively now on the top area and you can see that I'm starting to lose that shadowed line there. And so that's showing me, it's indicating that it is blending in with that fish shape underneath. I'm just going to up my diameter a little. I'm just going to go a bit more aggressive over here. And just keep going back and forth, that's all I'm doing. And remember, we don't want to go all the way down. We want this line to represent that gill area. We can see it's a nice strong line there, so we should just leave that as it is now. But we'll continue to go over the top just to make sure that we get a nice blend there. And I can see because there is no shadowed line there at all, it should blend in with the fish shape underneath. So if we just say keep and OK that, and so we can see there that we have a nice blend at the top of our fish, but we still have this hard line uh, in place that represents that gill area. And so that's a good technique to remember. So now I need to look at cropping back that shape to the shape of our fish. So I'm going to select the component that I'd like to crop. I'm going to come over, hold down shift and select that vector that we want to crop it to. Then we're going to come over and say clear area of selected component outside selected vectors and it's going to crop that back nicely for us. We can see we've got a real nice realistic look now. So let's go and create the shapes for the fins. So we'll select this one here, go over to create shape from vectors. In here we're going to assign that a rounded profile. I'm going to go with around a 30 degree angle. I'm also going to apply a base height of 0 0.05. So that's a no limit. I'm just going to uncheck the tilt option there and then set that to merge. Okay, so you can see that in there. And now what I would actually like to do is apply a tilt so that this fin is coming over the main body of the fish. So to do that we're going to use the tilt option. I'm going to say set anchor. I'm going to go from this point here to around this point here. Okay, and that's done that at default of 10 degrees. We just maximize the 3D view and just spin that round just so we can see how that looks. 
Now you can see we've got quite a wedge on there, so I might just reduce that down a little. Okay, so around 8 seems to do the trick. Okay, so I'm happy with that. We'll put that in Z. Then we'll tile our windows again by pressing page down. We'll name this component. We're going to call that fin1. Press apply. And then we can go and start a new component. So we'll go and select our next vector, which is this one here. Again, we're going to go with the same settings. So we'll press apply to see how that looks. And we can see that that's OK. This fin is supposed to look as though it's on the other side of the fish. So it looks OK that it's sat nicely underneath there. So I'm happy with that. We'll call that one fin2. And then press apply there. And start new component. Then we'll go and select this vector here. Let's pop that in C. And then we'll go with the same settings again. Let's just press apply there. Okay, you can see we've got a tilt on that. Uh, so I'm just going to uncheck that just to see how that looks. Okay, in this instance, I could do with that tilt there just to lift that up so it's sat proud of the main body of the fish. So it's coming up and joining into the body there. So we'll use the tilt option here. I'm just going to maximize the 3D view again just so we can get a good look at how the wedge looks on there. Okay, so it's not too bad. Uh, this could reduce it a little, maybe to 6 degrees and maybe 5.8. So it's just about tweaking uh, with the values until you're happy with how it looks in the main composite model. Okay, so I'm happy with that. We'll put that in Z and then we'll call that one fin3. Press apply. We're going to go and start a new component. So I'm going to tile my windows by pressing page down on the keyboard. So then we'll go and select our next vector, which is this one here. Okay, again we'll go with the same settings and press apply to see how that looks. Okay, so you can see uh, we have quite a rounded shape. So I may look at reducing the angle of this, so I'll bring that down to around 20 there. Okay, so let's just flatten that off a little. I may also want to decrease the base height. So I'll come in there and alter that to 0 0.03 just to drop that down a little. Okay, so that's not too bad. However, we do need to uh, bring this up into the main body of the fish like we have done for these two fins. So we need to look at using the tilt option. So I'm going to go into the tilt mode. I'm going to set my anchor. Okay, so I'm going to go from this point here to this point here. Okay, so it's done that at 5.8 degrees. Let's just maximize the 3D view and zoom in there. So again, we can see how that wedge is looking. And then we can look at just decreasing that down. Okay, so 4 seems to have done the trick there. You can see it's just about coming over there. So I'm happy with that. Let's put that in Z. We'll go and call that one Fin4. And then we'll press Apply. And we'll go and start a new component. Let's just press page down again to tile our windows. We'll go and select our next vector over here. Again, let's go with some of these settings again. Let's press apply and see how that looks. Okay, it's not too bad. That looks okay. And then we'll go and uh, call that one fin5. Then we'll press apply. We're going to go and start a new component. We're going to select this last vector here. Again, let's go with some of the same settings as we have done before. We'll press apply. Okay, so that's not too bad. I may look at increasing the base height of this one to 0 0.05. And then I may even reduce the angle of this down a little bit more to around 15 degrees to flatten that off so it's blending nicely into the back of the fish shape there. Okay, so I'm happy with that, so we'll go and call that one Fin6, press apply, and then we can close that form down. So I'll pop that back in Z. So now we have all of the components that form the basic fish model. What I'd like to do now is apply a general smooth over the entire part, along with looking at uh, sculpting areas where the fins meet the main fish body. And so I'd like to retain uh, all of this information here. So I'd like to keep all of this information safe. 
So what I can do is I can look at using this option over here to create a component from a visible model. That's going to create a component from everything that's visible within our composite model here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first select my trout level to make that the active level, as I'd like this copy to be placed within this level here where we have our texture. So if that's selected, we can see that's the active level now as, it, as it's bold. We're going to come over here, create component from visible model. We can see that's added that to the trout level. So now I can minimize the basic fish shapes and switch that off. And I know I have all of the individual information of those parts left there safe for me to access when I want. So now we can go ahead and smooth uh, this model now. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to go over to the smooth filter. As you can see, it does that at default 50%. It's a little bit too much, so I'm just going to reduce that down to around 20, 25% there. Okay, so I can see that it's OK. So we'll OK that. And I'm going to maximize the 3D view, uh, put that in Z, and we're now ready to go ahead and uh, sculpt in the areas where the fins blend in to the main body of the fish. So we're going to select the component, we're going to come over to the sculpting tools. I'm going to turn off the grayscale background, I don't need that on. I'm going to make sure that my preserved transparency is switched on so that I'm not blending into the model in plane. Okay, we're just going to use the um, smooth option to begin with. And then we're going to go with a diameter of around 40, strength around 50, and then we'll keep the smoothness at 70. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to go back and forth. You can see that my pen has changed to a red colour. That's telling me that it's active and it's uh, allowing me to apply those changes. Okay, you can see just going back and forth, that's uh, made that a bit more realistic and it looks as though it's blending into the body. Okay, we'll do the same over here. If we wanted to, we could up the strength if you felt a bit more confident in making these changes. And we could look at up in the diameter also, so that we have a bigger brush to use. Okay, and then we'll come around this side here, again, just going back and forth, making sure that we're blending in all of those areas, so that we're removing those hard lines. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's come over this area here, and then we'll just come over to that part there. And if I wanted to, I could use more advanced uh, tools such as a smudge tool to maybe cut in the mouth area there but I'm happy with how this looks I'm going to press keep and OK. Ok so now I'm happy with that I'm just going to switch that off and I'm just going to turn on that texture that we created at the start. Ok so you can see that there is a lot of speckling and noise in the image and that's very typical of digital images unless they've been generated in a graphics program and then saved in a very high quality format. So there's a few things that we need to do first. So firstly, we need to think about smoothing this. And then secondly, uh, what the software does, it automatically scales the height of this part. So the light areas being high and the dark areas being low. And we'll want to check the Z height of this part before we overlay it over our basic fish model. So I'm going to select that, then we're going to go over to the smooth filter Okay, so again, remember it does that at default 50%. It's not too bad, I may just reduce that to be around 40. Okay, so that's okay, I'm happy with that, so we'll press OK there. And we can see that it's removed a lot of the noise there. And so it's started to blend together all of these shapes. Okay, so I'll just pop that in Z. I'm going to go to the Properties form, and then we'll select the texture there. So you can see the shape height of that is 0.1429. Now when we're overlaying textures over 3D shapes, we normally don't need it to have a very high Z value because it's going to take a lot of the shape from the ones that it's going to be added to. So we're just going to reduce that down to 0 0.05 and I'll press space to enter that in. Okay, so then we can close that down. And then we'll go and tile our windows. Then what I'd like to do now is put switch on my visible model here. 
Okay, so you can see that there. Then I'd like to crop the texture to the shape of our fish. So if that's selected, I'm going to hold down Shift, select the uh, fish shape, the copy of the visible model. We're going to come over and we're going to clear everything outside of the last item in the selection. Okay, we can see it that's created that crop there for us. And if we maximize the 3D view, we can see that we have quite a rather pleasing shape there. And we can see that that texture has been overlaid on top of our basic fish shapes. And so the quality of the component that you create when you import an image is going to depend a lot on the image itself. If the image is low resolution, then that's probably not going to give you a very good component. Also, if the image has a lot of shadows or highlights, light or dark areas, then when they translate into the Z heights of the component, then that also will probably not give you something which is going to be a very useful as this texture component that we've got here. And so a good way to check the quality of an image before you start drawing any vectors or creating any models is to import it into a session of Aspire, then roughly size it and scale it up and do the smoothing passes on it and see what it looks like. If it looks okay at that stage, then you should be able to use it like we have in this example. Or you may be able to use the sculpting tools to tidy it up and smooth or smudge areas together. Or it may be that it's just not good enough quality to create any useful texture for a part that we'd like to machine. And so that completes this tutorial where we've looked at various different modeling techniques. So the two main modeling techniques we looked at where the create component from bitmap in order for us to get that fish texture and then we looked at various modeling tools such as the create shape and the two rail sweep in order for us to create the basic fish shape. We then overlaid that texture on top of that basic model to create the fish that you can see here. And so it's a good idea at this stage to go ahead and save that file so we'll go to file save as then in the project folder we're just going to call that trout model then we'll save that and then you can access that from your project folder